I mentioned in an earlier video that every note that I play on the oboe, whether it's a high note or a low note, whether it's loud or soft, uh, aggressive, expressive, gentle, doesn't matter. Uh, it's on a G. So what changes? Uh, one of the big concepts that I work with is um, tailoring the wind to the note you're playing. Uh, it's um, uh, internal resonance. Uh, what it means is that the wind that I'm putting through the reed is already a G or an E or a high C or a low D or whatever note that I'm playing requires certain tuning inside my mouth. Sound is omnidirectional. Uh, the wind makes a sound, but it's not just coming out of the oboe, it's also going back into my mouth. Right? I mean, if you ever uh, talk into the wind, it's harder for the people in front of you to hear you, but they still can. The, the sound travels in all directions. And so your, your, your mouth cavity is a part of the entire mechanism. So to make a long story short, my low notes are ooh, do, 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 do. My high notes are d d d. So low notes are high notes are d d d d d. So try to do that with your mouth in an embouchure position, uh, and uh, the idea is to keep your throat from doing anything. These are your vocal cords, and if I want to sing high, they go here, and if I want to sing low, they go here. But this is my vocal cord on the oboe. So these only get in the way. So I'm going to keep these at my most resonance. If I was lecturing a classroom uh, with a couple of hundred people, and I want them to hear me in the back, except that instead of speaking, I'm going to blow wind, but I'm going to keep this right here. So even if I'm saying D, 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 it's not D, D, D. So if I were to take away the oboe and replace the wind with speech. D. It would sound like this. Not like this. If I play like this and a lot of people hold their throat like this while they're playing the oboe. It all instantly gets this kind of titan quality that really restricts your range of expression. And so um, keep the throat low. And that also relates to what I was saying before in an earlier video about starting to exhale, letting the shoulders relax before you pressurize. It's a crucial step and it takes a fraction of a second. And if you skip it, everything goes worse. And so low notes are too. And if we go up the scale, do turns into do, do. Notice that your biggest mouth shape. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. By the time I get to the top of the instrument, Practically hissing into the the instrument, shh, d, do, and everything in between. And if you can internalize this concept and apply it automatically, every time I see a first octave A, I automatically go d, not d. But if I see a second octave A, I automatically go d. Uh, if you apply this concept, you'll realize that which octave you get. Uh, depends on the wind, and you don't need the tightening of the mouth, the tightening of the throat, the hard tongue, all the things that people do to try to get second octaves out of this instrument. They're not your friends, they're your enemies. I can get a second octave A. That's almost a whole step low, and there's no trace of the lower octave. Similarly, I have to go very sharp on the lower octave before I crack it. Uh, that's because the wind is tuned to the note. D, DO. And um, you'll have a much easier time. It's the wind.
that produces the second octave instead of the first one. So uh, uh, stop using your throat, stop using your jaw, stop using the tongue, especially. It makes it sound bad. Nobody wants to hear people slapping at the reed with their tongue. It has nothing to do with brokenness. It has nothing to do with music, period. <laughs> so uh, I hope you agree.